Well, here I am again. Um, I want to talk about Trey Young this time around because uh, Trey Young has been like making his name been making the rounds as of you know recently, and it's because now his name go definitely probably gonna be in rumors uh, again this off season. Um, it was smoke before this season even started that he might be traded like sooner right, rather than later, right? I thought he was going to get traded last all season. So now the smoke is still there. It's still there because guess what? The Hulk stink once again. The Hulk stink once again. That's why uh, the John T. Murray name was out there for the Lakers, Utah Jazz, teams of that nature. And guess what? <laughs> he they didn't want to trade him. They, did, they just didn't want to cooperate. It is what it is. So, um... All the team are interested in DeJounte Murray. They decide to move on. And now we in a situation where the Hawks stink. They, I don't even think they're going to make a play-in once again. Um, well, I can't say once again because we trade in the last couple of years. been trying to uh, crawl his way to the playoffs each year. So I think they made the play in back-to-back years. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, this situation with the Hawks is not going to work. It's unfortunate that it's not going to work because um, Trey Young is a top 20 player in this game. Um, his awards should look more, it should look way better than what it is right now. I think he's like a two time All Star and, and maybe one, two time All NBA or something like that. That's not, that's not good enough, bro. And that's not on Trey Young at all. Um, I feel like the situation he in with the Hawks is very is hampering him badly because you hear guys like Darren White name get thrown around All Star games over him. What? Do what? That's insane. That that's pretty insane. And as a whole, it's like, how can you improve this team? Let me know because they got rid of John Collins for uh, cookies. Uh, Clint Capella is still on this team. I don't think he got the foot speed. And like he he just he definitely lost his step a ton. Um they got Sadiq Barrett. No, I have to look that out. But they, they got Sadiq Bay they have to worry about. They got DeAndre Hunter they have to worry about. Well DeAndre Hunter, I think no, nah, it's not DeAndre Hunter, it's somebody else I'm forgetting. But they just resigned the John T. Murray to a contract. Um like then they got this young guard from Michigan. I think his name was Kobe Burkin, I believe. They got him. Um, I mean, if, if they do want to get rid of Trey and they want to go to rebuilding phase, at least they have at least a young guard that's developing as we speak. Okay, at least they have that. But I, I just, I just, I just, I don't know, man. It, it's very questionable on the Hawks side thing because you have a top twenty talent, and you just. He just didn't build a super no situation for him to even thrive in because the last couple of years he's been through a lot of coaches and uh, they've been trying to call him a coach killer because his initial coach was Lloyd Pierce that didn't work. Uh, David Miller didn't work. Uh, Quinn Snyder. It's, it's, I feel like the offense has improved a ton, but the defense is still the worst in the NBA though. So I don't know. It's like a pick your poison type thing, I guess, but. I, I I don't know. But I actually want to get into Trey Young destinations, though. This is where the juicy part is right here. And um, let's go ahead and talk about the all situ- the situation everybody been talking about, and that's the Los Angeles Lakers. So with the Los Angeles Lakers, what they can offer in the all season is going to be uh, either the 2024 or 2025 pick, wherever the Pelicans choose in the all season. Then it's going to be the 2029 pick. I believe the 2030 pick. Then you can just do, like, pick swap after that. And, you know, they still got, a, a, what, a boatload of second-round picks they can use as well. So, and they have, like, countries like D'Angelo Russell, maybe Rui, um, Gabe Vincent, which I don't think the host going to – they're going to try to ask for uh, Jared Vanderbilt. I, I'm telling you that right now. If, they, if we are uh, a deal in negotiation – with the Hawks, and they know that Trey Young wants to be a Laker, yeah, they're going to ask for the form. I'm just letting you know that. I don't know why Lakers fans be trying to operate under their, oh, we the Lakers. We we offer a better situation. We do this and that. Listen, I'm telling you this right now. You operate under faith like that, you're going to get burned. We got burned by the Kyrie Irving there. We got burned by Kawhi Leonard. We got burned, like, Bro, I'm telling you this right. We got burned by uh, Paul George as well. I'm telling you, these teams will spite you just to just to spite you, especially since you're the Lakers. 
yeah, they, they're going to do anything in their power to make sure things go off the rails quickly. So, yeah, uh, we got contracts to offer them. Uh, it's, it's just about where um, if the Hawks take it or not. And now, if they if it happens, now we have a top 20 player. We have three top 20 players on this team. And this and this team is not a top three seed, top three to five. No, 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 screw that. If this team not a top three seed, then it would be a massive, massive disappointment. I'm not trying to be a playing Warriors for three years straight and you have top two, three top 20 players in the league. That's that's wild, okay? But, yeah, despite that, because I guess that's the Lakers PTSD talking, Trey Young on this team would be awesome. Now, you see D'Lo as a passer. Imagine Trey Young as a passer. I feel like D'Angelo Russell passing is not that bad. I feel like if folks say Trey Young is a top eight playmaker in the league, I swear to you, like, D'Angelo Russell's probably, like, in the 10 to 15 range. I swear it's not that close because when you see D'Angelo Russell snap these passes, especially off the horn set, where he tells either, like, Rui Hachimura, whoever said in the second uh, horn screen, he tells them to go down, and he just deliver. If the defender is not looking towards him when, when he passed it, He's passing right with the top of the defender, and he's that's a dime right there. And then the way he can sell up his passes, like sometimes he would do like his little step back mid. So he would just pair that with the step back mid, he just throw a lob to AD. And I'm like, these are some elite passes. I'm like, bro, this is this is some crazy stuff. Now Trey Young, his passes are very amazing, especially from at his size. Um now it's moments where the defense can trap him. Then it's like very hard to see since he like, like since he got like six one. I I give him, and um uh, yeah, it's just it, it's just not comfortable in certain situations. But I'm telling you this right now: you pair up Trey Young scoring who can shoot it from anywhere, and he can uh he got the flow game going on. And I feel like he's a more explosive scorer than uh D'Angelo Russell. You know, this man D'Angelo Russell as a late has been like killer. Uh, we're going to see how it goes like later on in the season, especially after All-Star break, especially, you know, with we'll we'll, we'll all this break going on and they just want to detach from basketball. We're going to see how they recover from all that, and we're going to see how the other Russell fits for the uh, rest of the season. But Trey Young, I'm telling you this right now. Um, this would probably be the first season when Brown J would average below 20 four to five points in the league. I believe he could probably have his 22 points. Trey Young can have like 25 points. I mean, he probably still be in his 25 point per game range. I believe AD can have his around like 23 to 25 himself. Dude, this team would be awesome. Then you add like free agent and distance here in it. Bro, I'm t if they do it right, this will be a top three seed, no question about it. But... We also have to realize there's also a comparative for Trey Young, and that's the San Antonio Spurs. So, uh, with the Lakers, though, the Lakers, they have clutch sports, you know, LeBron James, you know, that connection there. But what San Antonio can offer, he can be closer to home. You can play one with one of the best uh, players in the league, maybe the best player in the league in, in a couple of years, if Victor went beyond. But folks think, oh, you had Trey Young and Wimby Young on the same team. That's still 40 to 45 wins. Incorrect. Incorrect. The reason why these guys are losing so many games is because these guys are not hitting Victor Wimby Young. Because, and I swear to you, they can add at least three more wins if they actually look for Victor Wimby Young. I'm telling you that right now. These guys are just blind for some reason. But if you add a guy like Trey Young, have him and Victor Wimby Young setting screen, bro. He's he's going to make sure Victor Wembanyama touch the ball. I'm to the Spurs could add a guy like DeAndre Russell to the team, and they would be a much better team than what they are now. But if you add Trey Young, who's uh, supposed to score, the folks think this is a 40, 45 win team, bro. They would be approaching fifty wins with freaking Wembanyama and Trey Young. So not only that, they got oh he's going to be closer to home, and they can play with one of the best players in the league, bro. We, it's no telling what they can do in the all season with their uh, cap space. Now I'm not sure how much it's going to be after they free up a bunch of cap, but I'm telling you, and the guy like Trey Young with Victor Wembanyama will be scary. 
I the reason why Lakers fans are operating under this belief of the Spurs, oh, they're gonna be a 40, 40, 40, 40 to forty five win team. Why would he wanna go there and he just came off a rebuilding situation? I don't think this is gonna be a rebuilding situation if he go if he gets paired up with Wimby. I truly don't. And then you have Greg Popovich. If he has good talent around him, he know how to coach around good talent. I can, like I said before, I can give him that. I can give him that. He know how to coach around good talent. It's just when you have like young PC at the develop, it's gonna get spiked. Around good talent, we are gonna see the best of Greg Popovich once again. I'm telling you that. So that's also another thing. And yeah. I basically cover all the destinations. Now, if we evaluate all the teams, like, who would need, like, a Trey Young? Because the Knicks so don't. Um, the Pelicans, maybe? Him and Zion? And then you just trade Ingram or something for, like, a signing trade? Um, uh, let's see. The Rock, I, don't, I don't know. The Rock is really messed up. I'm probably going to have to talk about them soon. But they really messed up not offering James Harden that contract because of he wanted to be a scoring champion. That's that's bogus. I hope I like in multiple sources, including James Harden himself, even confirmed it. So I hope that situation is wild. Um, you know, the Suns don't have cash space. The Thunder, I don't think they're gonna need a, a trade young presence, even though he's from Oklahoma City, I believe. Um, like. Like the Celtics not gonna need a Trey Young, the Cavaliers not gonna need a Trey Young. Um, like, like it's setting up for really only two teams to be preparing. Why did it feel like a guy like Trey Young? Because the Clippers already got James Harden, Paul George, who they're gonna have to worry about resigning. I have, I might have to talk about them soon. Um, like, yeah, it's really no teams except for the Lakers and the Spurs to you know actually get serious now. A team like maybe Utah might be available to try to get Trey Young to pair up with Larry Marketing. I won't count them out. I truly won't because I feel like this Utah Jazz team could be uh, a playoff team. And now you can say that's a rebuilding situation. I would agree on that front because they really don't have a top, a clear top 20 player on their roster right now. Okay. But they do got Keontae Jones and Larry Marketing who are good players. Uh, probably, no, actually, I'd probably say both. I know Keontae Jordan, like, have the potential to be a great player. Larry Markin, I feel like he's a great player, too. He's a good off-ball player. He's a good mover at his size. He probably just, you know, need to add a couple things to his post game. He'll be all right. But, yeah, that's all That's all I really got for today's video. Hopefully, you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. This is Boy Trail. I'm out.